She hugged her and kissed her on the cheek as she welcomed her into her family. That's when her attention was drawn to a birthmark on her palm that was both unusual and familiar. She came to a complete stop as his mouth dropped open. She looked at her son's bride with a careful gaze, her heart aching as she recognized some of her familiar characteristics. Martha Kenny, age 64, was getting ready for her son, Mark's wedding, when the incident occurred. She was living on her own in a modest hamlet in the Fargo, North Carolina suburbs at the time of her death. She hadn't seen her son in four years since he'd relocated to New York City. He was juggling a demanding professional schedule and couldn't spare the time or money to pay her a visit. Martha was unconcerned. She was exclusively concerned with the happiness and health of her son. She was well aware of the high cost of living in a metropolis such as New York. Mark had only been in New York for six months when he called his mother to inform her that he'd found himself a new lover. Martha was overjoyed for him at the time, but she would soon discover that the relationship was not what it appeared to be. Throughout the year, Martha received a few phone calls from her son, but she wished he would call more often. But when Mark finally called to tell her that he had proposed to her and asked her to marry him, she burst into tears. She spent the next few months searching for the ideal dress to wear to her son's wedding, but she soon realized that finding the right dress would be the least of her concerns. Fortunately, her son and his fiancée decided to get married in Fargo, preventing Martha from having to go all the way to New York by herself. They arrived by plane on the morning of their wedding, eager and excited. Martha put on her new best dress and made her way to the wedding venue to greet her son and daughter-in-law, utterly oblivious to what was in store for her in the following hours. It was going to be Martha's first meeting with her daughter-in-law, Holly, and she couldn't wait. She'd previously spoken with her on the phone, but had never met her in person. She arrived to the wedding and hugged her son, who was in tears at the time. She adored him and was overjoyed to see him starting a family of his own with his wife and children. And then Holly appeared. Holly was enveloped in a bear hug and Martha clasped her hands in hers. Inviting her into the family was made much more pleasant by a warm grin and charming voice. But then she spotted something really peculiar, which caused her to come to a complete halt in her tracks. Her entire life was about to be turned completely on its head, literally. As Martha clasped her hands together, she noticed a distinctive birthmark on the back of her right hand. It was impossible not to notice it because it was such a unique shape. Her entire body went completely still. Her stomach sank to her ribs. She appeared to be afraid. Holly became alarmed and inquired as to what was happening. There's nothing wrong, she said hastily, yet there was something wrong. Upon closer inspection, she discovered that her birthmark was strikingly similar to one she'd previously seen. It shared many of the same traits as her own biological daughter, who was tragically abducted a few months before she went missing. The sudden recollection of her long-lost daughter hit her like a punch in the stomach. Martha smiled as she raised her hands to Holly. This time, she looked her in the eyes with genuine interest. She looked deeply into her eyes, searching for answers. Did she have a chance that this was her long-lost daughter? The more time Martha spent observing the lovely young lady, who was to become her son's fiancé, the more convinced she became of the parallels between the two of them. Martha attempted to reason with her, hammering hard, but was unable. She attempted to rationalize away how silly her hypothesis was, but she couldn't get her mind off her gut feeling about the situation. It was already too late. She began to seriously consider the possibility that Holly, the fiancé of her son, was her long-lost daughter. She, on the other hand, required proof. First and foremost, she needed to be certain that her suspicions weren't completely unfounded before she ventured to say anything and risk ruining the entire wedding. In the end, it was her son's happiness that she was about to destroy. She had no idea how the rest of the group would respond. She needed to know no matter what. Martha inquired as to whether she'd be able to meet Holly's parents. They'd be the ones to know the truth about the situation if anyone did. Molly escorted her over to them and introduced her to everyone. They exchanged pleasantries until Martha asked Holly if she would want to meet alone with her parents and escorted her parents away from the group. Martha was at a loss on how to approach the subject. Holly's parents' reactions to her were something she could only picture till she'd done it herself. 
Even so, she felt compelled to inquire. She'd grown bored of waiting after all these years of not knowing. She decided she didn't care what people thought of her and took a big breath to make herself feel better. She couldn't afford to spend any time. She approached them with the utmost care and delicacy and inquired as to whether or not their daughter was adopted. The facial expressions shifted almost immediately. They'd never told anyone else about this little-known fact. Their faces were flushed with surprise as they contemplated whether or not to inform her. Martha pleaded, but she wasn't prepared for the response they gave her. Holly's biological parents confirmed that she had been adopted, but no one, not even her, knew what was going on. They questioned Martha about why she'd asked them this question. Instead of responding, Martha urged them to share with her information about how they adopted her and whether or not they were aware of her biological parents. Before responding, the pair exchanged worried looks with one another. They informed her that they'd discovered a toddler on the street more than 20 years previously. Because no one came to claim her, they took her into their home and took care of her. They provided her with an education and treated her as if she were their own daughter. Martha couldn't believe her ears when she heard what she was hearing. She fell into sobs as she realized what had happened. During this entire time, Martha was terrified that her daughter had been kidnapped or worse. She could never have thought that a compassionate family would take her in and nurture her in a loving and supportive environment. Holly's parents have stated that they reported her to the appropriate authorities in the surrounding area. Martha's heart sank as she realized that they'd failed to establish the connection between her missing girl statement and the police report. They were completely unaware that someone was listening in. Holly gathered with a group of pals who lived nearby to find out what they needed to talk about in private. Slowly but steadily, she moved closer and closer to her parents and her sister, Martha. Even though she was straining her ears, she nodded pleasantly in agreement with the conversation her companions were having. She could only just make out what they were saying at times. They communicated in hushed tones. She doesn't realize she's adopted, Holly's mother said, and she overheard her. I believe this is my biological daughter, Martha sobbed, and she recognized her. I lost track of her more than two decades ago while on a road trip in Alabama and never found her again. Oh my God, Holly's mother exclaimed. Holly's head snapped in their direction. She looked at Martha with wide eyes as if she'd just witnessed something incredible. Her eyes became moist with tears as the conversation progressed. Holly made her way towards them slowly. Does this sound true? She inquired of her parents. Martha was not the only one who had been taken aback by her appearance. She had no intention of her finding out in this manner. Holly's parents shared their thoughts. We happened to come upon you on the street in a run-down town in Alabama. We went around seeking for your parents, but no one was there to be found. We couldn't bear the thought of abandoning you, her mother wailed. Holly looked at Martha with wide eyes as if she lost her mind. Martha returned the gaze. They were both in tears as they realized what they'd seen was absolutely odd. However, the day had not yet come to an end. Holly was the one who was the first to defuse the situation. She eventually gave in once the initial shock wore off. After conceding to the seemingly inconceivable truth of events, she opened her arms to welcome him into the world. Her actions were echoed by Martha, and the two women sobbed as they hugged each other. What about her son, on the other hand? Is it possible for the wedding to go ahead? In the end, despite the fact that each party was in utter shock and was overtaken with emotion, the reunion turned out to be a happy occasion for everyone. The newlywed bride and groom were allowed to continue their wedding celebrations due to a fortunate turn of circumstances, much the relief of everyone concerned. But how do you do it? Fortunately, Mark and Holly didn't suffer from a blood or hereditary relationship and they were able to proceed with the wedding plans as planned. If they'd done so, their relationship would have been considered fully illegal, and their marriage would have been declared null and void. But how could they possibly be unrelated? Another fortunate turn of events occurred when Martha's kid, Mark, was truly adopted. Martha was distraught after she was unable to locate her missing daughter. Having made the decision to turn her sadness into something wonderful, her next step was to apply for adoption and nurture another kid in need. However, there was one significant difference between Mark and Holly in terms of their upbringing. Mark, on the one hand, grew up knowing he was adopted from the beginning. Even though Martha made the decision to tell him the truth whenever he inquired, 
the boy was treated as if he were Martha's biological child. She was a remarkable woman who was a devoted mother. But what was his reaction to this seemingly inconceivable discovery? The fact that Mark and Holly were not related in any way made them feel comforted despite their disbelief. The love they shared for each other was stronger than any rumors they heard about each other, and they eventually came to see the odd scenario as a tremendous blessing in disguise for their daughter, Martha. Holly was so eager to discover more about her biological mother and the tragedy that transpired all those years ago, something she'd never before known. Holly had completely forgotten about it. She was only two years old at the time and had a hazy recollection of her early childhood. She had a bad habit of forgetting things that had happened the day before. Holly and Martha, on the other hand, underwent DNA testing in order to be certain of their link. Their beliefs were validated by the outcomes. One question, though, remained unanswered. Holly had no knowledge of her biological father and inquired of Martha as to what had transpired in his absence. Martha informed her that he had passed away more than a decade earlier as a result of an illness. Holly became even more appreciative to her adoptive parents, as well as her efforts to locate her birth mother before it was too late to save her life. The story has a nice conclusion for this family. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks. We'll be right back to you as fast as we can.